Good evening, everyone. I'll call the City Council meeting to order. May I have the roll call, please? Councilmember Elliott? Here. Councilmember Garcia? Here. Councilmember Fitzhenry? Here. Councilmember Sandall? Here. Mayor Gotell? Here. And uh, we have a one person, a speaker for the open forum. Uh, Susan Rosenberg, would you please come join us at the mic? Make sure the green dot is, is lit up. Please state your address and everything. And don't forget to sign in afterwards. Good evening. I'm Susan Rosenberg, 6633 Thomas Avenue South. And I'm here tonight to invite you and all of the uh, Richfield residents to the Richfield Beautiful Garden Tour that's going to happen this Saturday. And the tour is from, John, you're going to put it in the, great, in the overhead. This, the tour is from 1 to 5 on Saturday. And uh, the maps are on uh, sale right now at all the liquor stores here in City Hall at Wood Lake Nature Center and the Community Center. We have nine gorgeous gardens. Six of them are Richfield Garden Club members. And this is to commemorate our 75th anniversary. The Garden Club has been in Richfield since 1938. And someone asked me if we had any original members. <laughs> And I said, well, no, they'd probably be under the garden <laughs> instead of on the gar in the garden. But um, no, we have a great history and a great partnership with so many organizations here in, in Richfield. And right now we've partnered with the Richfield Historical Society and the city of Richfield, not only for the garden tour, but also at the community center. We do plant gardens over there, and we have done garden plantings around the Veterans Memorial. But this Saturday we have nine gorgeous gardens for people to come and enjoy. By the maps, it's a self-guided tour, rain or shine. Gardeners love rain, and the gardens are just as beautiful under the sun or under an umbrella. So don't let any of the weather stop you. But please come and buy a map for $5, and you'll really have a good time. And, and Susan, can, if somebody wants to become a member If of anyone the wants Club. to become a member, we would love to have them. Uh, they can call me. My number is out there all over the place at 612-866-2683. It's on the poster, and we'd love to talk to you. I'm president of the Richfield Garden Club this year, and uh, we're just having a really good time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. If I can comment, city council members never go away. They just change their hats. Yeah, <laughs> they never go away. We just, we're, we're there. We see a microphone. We can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a beautiful, beautiful show that yeah, you put been, together. Yeah. And it's really worth it. It's just. Very much. Yeah. That's a lot to our city. Um, would everybody please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance up here? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask approval of the minutes of the special concurrent City Council and Planning Commission work session of June 25th, 2013, the regular city council meeting of June 25th, 2013. Second. So moved. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Second. We got oh, Any discussion? Whatever. Doing two one. Yeah. Oh. Why don't I just go ahead and third it? Okay. All right. That's fine. <laughs> All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. So we have uh, council discussion. Um, one of the first items is the cancellation of the Tuesday, August 27th, 2013 regular city council meeting. I'll Does everybody um, want to move that? I'll move it. Any other, Second. Any discussion on that? It's All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Now, um, just to, uh, <laughs> with this item, uh, city manager, I went. To, we have a budget session that was scheduled, right, at that? We have a budget session that's scheduled that certainly that week. I have um, it on my calendar for <laughs> Wednesday, August 28th at 5 o'clock. That's yeah, exactly so. when it is. Yeah. Yep. That's what I had to yep. do at five. I just wanted to remind people. That's also an open meeting, and anybody who wants to come um, can certainly come to that meeting as well. Yep, we're gonna we on, on that evening. We hope to, you know, we'll start at five o'clock, and I I'm. Uh, we'll be out uh, by midnight. My aim is pardon me. We'll be out by midnight. Yeah, oh yeah, we'll be out by midnight. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, we will. But I, you know, I, I want to go through and just cover everything yeah, that night. Okay. So it's going to be a long. It'll be a long night. Okay. But, so this isn't, isn't really fair that we have a night off, but we really don't. 
Yeah, I know. That was kind of, yeah, that was kind of a low blow, wasn't it? You know, that's how the budgeting always works, though. We end up having to do this all, every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes we were able to push it off into, you know, that first uh, week in September so people get to have that that last week in August and the, um, sometimes and the, lab yeah, and the yeah, Labor Day holiday Labor Day. just doesn't work out this time. So it, there are reasons why we can't do it soon is because we're not getting some of our numbers. Isn't that correct? Right, exactly. I mean, even, even um, Chris tries hard to get the budget out um, you know, like the second uh, or third, before the, somewhere between the second and third week of August, but um, that's even a stretch because we're guessing at a lot of revenues, and uh, we don't get a lot of our revenue data till later in August, so. Okay, right. Yeah. Um, it's uh, hats off to hometown sit, and I told uh, Councilmember Sandal she could go first. My assistant will be putting something up on the overhead for us. <laughs> um, thank you, Tom, I appreciate that. I just wanted to announce that there's um, going to be a great concert coming up at Woodlake Lutheran Church on Sunday, July 14th. And Woodlake Lutheran is located at um, six, 76th Street and Oliver. And it's called Asante. It's a children's choir from East Africa. There's 24 children. They will be playing drums, dancing, singing, both American worship music as well as African folk songs. And Asante is a group that was formed in Rwanda in 1999 after the genocide. And many of these children are orphans or who have families that can't support them. And Asante has helped to build schools and educate children. And so this group is going to be here in Richfield. It's certainly worth attending. If anyone is interested, the concert is free, starting at 7 o'clock, Sunday, July 14th, at Woodlake Lutheran Church. Is that all you have? That's mine. The other one was Susan, and she did it already. Okay. All right. And Councilmember Fitzhenry, I'll let you go next. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. A uh, couple items. So I did attend the uh, band shelter test, we call it that, <laughs> at the uh, uh, Vets Park. It was a great Irish band. I wish I could remember their name, but it was a lot of fun. And so we got to evaluate that location for noise, and the planes were going overhead. And I will report we could hear the band. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting. Uh, we got one this Wednesday, also at uh, Lindale Gardens, where they'll be testing. And I don't know who the band is. Uh, I have that. Do okay. you? And you're so, going to be talking about that, or? Yeah, yeah. So I'll <laughs> but have to I, I suggest people to come out, and they did hand out cards, so you could evaluate how you felt the aesthetics were, the sound, and that. So I suggest people that are interested in where the band shelter is going to do that. Uh, the other item I want to say, we had an awesome 4th of July. Uh, parade was great, and moreover, um, since I live close to the fireworks and that, this was probably the best unruly crowd we've ever had. Uh, I walked through the park, and what was really interesting is I saw more families that had cookouts going there with uh, little grills and that, and it turned into more family uh, time. There was a lot of families, and I gotta tip my hat to Jim Topitz for who ain't here right now. I was amazed, I went through the uh, memorial, and they were doing guided tours of the memorial that night. Rather than just sitting there watching to make sure nobody vandalized it, they were actually given tours. <laughs> and I actually learned something just walk, watch, walking behind him and uh, watching the tour, but I wanna commend everybody in Richfield for uh, having a great fireworks and keeping it safe. So. Yeah, and it was be it's beautiful at night. <coughs> it is a very, very attractive memorial at night. It is. At very night's beautiful. even better. We, yeah. we haven't had many opportunities to see it at night. So That's great. Mm -hmm. So since you, you already gave me the, the, I'll go ahead here, I usually go last, but um, the music and the concert this July 10th at 6.30 p.m. at the Lindale Gardens. <coughs> Allison Scott, who is a local Richfield resident, is a very well and world-renowned uh, folk singer, will be at Lindell Garden site. And also, that night is also going to be, if you go earlier, will be the farmer's market at the same time. So, and the building's going down. The Lindell Garden site building is going down. I got pictures from Colleen Carey. And uh, so if she, we want to show some of that up on one of our, maybe out and about or just up online, I think we should grab that. It's really great to see some of that, um, see the, pro sad to see an old friend go. Um, but good to see something really great coming in there. So I'm really excited about that. So they also suggested you bring a lawn chair. So if you're going over there, so you have some place to sit. Um, I too want to say the 4th of July. I want to say how calm it was on the 4th of July. It's probably one of the best 4th of Julys we've had. The weather cooperated way better this year. 
Um, yeah, and it was phenomenal. It was just packed. And again, Best Buy did a fabulous job. We have to thank them for the fireworks. They were even more stupendous than last year. They did the, the 3D again, and that's just magnificent. I just, I so enjoy that, and yeah. I was very grateful for that. Um, just on a, on a side note, because I know that uh, we had a really, really tough year. I mean, winter didn't end, and now all of a sudden when spring came, it was like rain forever, and nobody could even mow a lawn or get a, a weed cut down. But it's time to get taken care of those weeds, and it's time to cut your lawns. And I know that I even said something to city manager, let's not be real, real hard on people till around 4th of July, because nobody's been able to hardly get, in, get their lawn cut as often as they should. I mean, even myself, I hired it out once just to get it done so it wasn't long. Um, but now we need, to, we need to be on top of it. I know some of our businesses, too, need to be looking at their, their gardens and pulling the weeds and such. I also noticed that um, we've had a problem along 76th Street. Or we had a lot of dead uh, sod from last year because of the heat, but we're getting a lot of weeds. And so the city has to try to keep up on that too. And some of our sidewalks are looking bad and our brick retaining walls and such. So city manager, if you, so we, so if we're passing out, you know, ordinances and, and fines for weeds, let's make sure we're on top of ours as well. So I'd appreciate the help on that. So Edwina. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, well, I want to talk about the 4th of July also. Uh, I was fortunate to, to ride in a car that was provided by Richfield Bloomington Honda in the Michig, Michig, how do you say that? Michig. There, thank you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Dealer from, uh, from Bloomington. And thank you to Tim Carter and, and also to uh, Brent Wade. I mean, it was a cute little car. It was all, all electric. And people kept saying, you know, hey, you need a wind-up thing for that car. You know, like a toy, wind-up toy, because it was just a really cute car. And it did have the signs on the side. But, you know, I think next time, if, if we ever do anything like that again, it'd be great to put on there that it's all electric. Yeah. Because every people kept asking, and I kept hollering, you know, it's all electric. So the car, I think, uh, got a lot of attention. I, I, I was kind of a little jealous of the car, but you know, <laughs> but, but anyway, um, it was a great turnout and just, just a fabulous day all around. And so all, all our prayers were answered. And, uh, and I thank you, Mr. Carter, for your help. And I appreciate it driving the car. That's nice. Let's see, being at the end of the line here, there's only so much you can say about 4th of July other than it was great. And I missed it last year, so it made it even more enjoyable this year. I think along with what Tom was saying about people camping out and, and, and eating and the memorial and all that, it, it really has become a regional attraction. And that, that's really nice to see because it just it puts out the best of Richfield, both in terms of the municipality and, and the people. And along those lines, uh, I know that... Uh, that Sue was a volunteer, Tom was around, Edwina. The mayor and I uh, did the, the late shift bartending and I said it, uh, I've said it every time I've done that, it's, it's amazing to me the generation gaps that we have that come to get their, their whatevers. <laughs> and, but I mean, collectively, every one of them, it didn't matter age or anything else, is polite, pleasant, yeah. friendly, and, and everybody is, is happy to be there, happy to be out, and that's really enjoyable. And interesting in regards to the electric car that uh, Edwina was in, it was, I think Tom and I were following behind it, wondering who was gonna run out of juice first, the car or him and I. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, all, we all finished the parade and we had a great time, so it was, it was really enjoyable, and I thank everybody for participating. You know, the whole thing is, is there was, first of all, there's no emissions, so you're not, mm -hmm. we were walking in the parade, we had none of that in our face. And it was so quiet. It was so quiet. That must have been fun to drive. I know you said it was. It, oh, what absolutely. A great, great experience. What a great experience. Absolutely. I have to thank your husband for driving for you. Yes. Yeah. I kind of wanted to get that, get out of the car and put it in my pocket and take it <laughs> home. <laughs> Council member. I, I want to thank Councilperson Fitzhenry for letting us use his electric cart. Mm -hmm. That was fun, too, which I actually got to drive that one. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Um, and then also thank you, thank you, thank you to the 4th of July committee who organized all of this, put on all of this street dance and the parade and the fireworks and 
and the kids' night the night before. You know, they do a lot of work, and anybody who has an interest and enjoyed the 4th of July and wants to see it get even better, please volunteer and help them because they start early planning for next year. Yeah, and you can do as little or as much as you'd like. If you just want to work on the parade, you can do that. If you want to work on something else. It's a wonderful, wonderful event. Oh, and Tom, thank you for uh, also fetching and carrying the banner for us. That was very nice. Um, and thank you for helping out our volunteers, Sue. Um, at this time, I'd ask council approval of the agenda. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. City Manager, we have the consent calendar. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. The consent calendar, for those uh, in the audience, uh, contains several separate items which are acted upon by the City Council in one motion. Once the consent calendar has been approved, all the individual items and the recommended actions will also have been approved, and no further action on those items will be necessary. Tonight, there are about a half a dozen items on the consent calendar, beginning with consideration of approval of the first reading of a transitory ordinance vacating storm sewer easement at 6400 Lindale Avenue and scheduling a public hearing and second reading for July 23rd, 2013. Item B is consideration of approval of the first reading of an ordinance amending the Richfield City Code relating to tattoo, body piercing, body branding, and body painting services. Item C is consideration of approval of resolution authorizing an interim use permit to allow Richfield Bloomington Honda to use, and that's actually, the word is use, but it, it's really going to be a lease, uh, the city-owned property at 7700 Pillsbury Avenue for off-site employee parking. Item D is consideration of approval of resolution authorizing the acceptance of grant monies in the amount of 26300 from the Department Minnesota Department of Commerce Auto Theft Prevention for the purchase of two automated license plate readers to be used in the Police Patrol Division. Item E is consideration of approval of authorizing an additional $33,905 for concrete, sidewalk, curb, and gutter repair. And finally, item F, consideration of approval of a resolution authorizing no parking on both sides of Richfield Parkway from 65th to 63rd Street. And that would conclude tonight's consent calendar. I'll move the consent calendar. Second. Is there any discussion or comments, Council? All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion, count. Motion carries. I have the next item here. This is consideration of disciplinary hearing and resolution regarding civil enforcement for Pump and Munch, 6300 Lindale Avenue South, that recently underwent tobacco compliance checks conducted by the Ridgefield Public Safety Staff and failed by selling tobacco to underage youth. Richfield Public Safety staff conducted their first tobacco compliance checks for 2013. These checks are done to determine the availability of tobacco to underage youth and to meet the state statutes. Of the 24 businesses that hold licenses to sell tobacco that were checked, three sold tobacco to underage persons. Two of the three establishments sold tobacco to a minor for the first time and are not required to appear before the City Council. The action being taken today is for the civil enforcement and the penalties against the third establishment, Pump and Munch, due to the fact that this is their second failure within a 24-month period. And on May 31st, 2013, Richfield Public Staff conducted tobacco compliance checks at the 24 establishments in Richfield for selling tobacco. They assisted by three underage youth that were all 16 years old. The businesses that sold tobacco to underage youth are the Richfield Liquor Store at 6444 Penn Avenue South, the Super America at 7720 Nicollet Avenue South, and the Pump and Munch at 6300 Lindell Avenue South. Due to the fact that this is a first time fail failure for the Richfield Liquor Store and Super America, their licenses will not be suspended nor are they required to appear before the City Council. They will each, however, be fined $200. Due to the fact that this is a second failure for Pump and Munch, they are required to appear before the City Council. And um, with that, does staff have anything to add to that? Uh, no, Madam Mayor. I don't know if there's somebody from Pump and Munch here. Is somebody here. from Pump and Munch here? So they fail well, to? Yeah, they're required to appear. If they fail to appear, it's just an admission of guilt, and then staff will meet with them to uh, okay. uh, collect the fine and uh, set up their suspension. You know, it's always nice if we can really encourage them to come because staff, does, we, we do ask questions, and I think it's really good faith if they do show up. It's really, 
would be in their best interest to show that you know they they are concerned and that they're training or that they're doing something with that employee. I mean, I know I, they I do. would agree. We they they were advised they should be here. Okay, but. all right, Madam Mayor, I would add that um, I think we should take a look at that and see if there's a way that we can um, mandate their appearance. I yeah. don't know if we can or we can't, but I'd like to see if we if we could in a situation like this. Make it stronger. I mean, it um, really does matter because some of them have said <coughs> we're putting in this new system or something. You know, we see some very encouraging things. Other times we don't. Right. And it'd be nice to hear the managers come yeah. speak. I mean, and I, I'd also say that, um, you know, for, for a, an establishment that really takes this seriously, I would, I would have hoped that they would have taken it seriously enough to appear before the city council. I think there's only one other time since I've been mayor that somebody hasn't shown up. Yeah. I would also say that um, I apologize to the city council that one of our rich, Richfield liquor stores uh, mm. failed, that, um, failed that compliance check. The, you know, we've got a very serious uh, policy about not mm. selling to uh, tobacco or, or liquor to individuals that are underage. Uh, we have a very strict policy on how identification is supposed to be handled, um, and it, it just wasn't done. And um, in, our, <coughs> in our system, there's no second chance. If you make a mistake doing that in the Richfield system, you're terminated mm -hmm. immediately. There's no questions. And I mean, I, you, you can, you can um, appeal it to the city manager, and I'll take a look at it. But every time I've looked at it, I don't see, a, I, I've never seen a good reason why, why we wouldn't, why I wouldn't take the action to terminate. We also uh, prosecute our own employees for doing that. So uh, there's steep penalties for it, and you know all you can do is um, is is just <laughs> make sure that that everybody along the way. And I, I spoke to the liquor operations director. I spoke to the store manager both and told them how serious I thought it was and how I don't ever want to see Richfield stores appearing on these sheets that we've uh, committed those kinds of violations uh, because we are the city. We are the city. We're the enforcement entity. We have to be, uh, we have to be the very best at this. And I don't think we've had a, a tobacco um, sale to underage for probably, man, I would guess, ten years, maybe even longer. Not since I've been mayor. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was gonna say at least ten years, and uh, I sure hope it's at least ten years before this. I ever think it's again. entirely appropriate, appropriate to uh, terminate someone. And I know that many of the businesses also do that. Yeah, I'm quite I, sure they do. I think they need to know how serious this is and yeah. how how we feel about that. Just a question, Your Honor. Yeah. Um, asking the city attorney whether or not we could have a penalty of $800 fine if you don't come and $400 if you do. Maybe we'd get attendance. Double the fine. <laughs> Double the fine. That's a possibility. I guess we'd have to look at the uh, enabling statute to see if there's some provision for that. But generally, it is within local mm -hmm. control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. to establish the, the penalties. So that's mm -hmm. something that we could take a look at to see if that could be incorporated into the penalty structure. Mm -hmm. Council member? No, and I, and I just wanted to say to uh, Mr. Devich, I, I think that's great that, uh, you know, that we do have stiff penalties for, you know, for people that work in Richfield and for Richfield. Um, and, you know, it's something that, that we take seriously and, and that it, it shows others that nothing is swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, at this time then, I will recommend that we <coughs> are suspending the license to sell tobacco for two consecutive days for the second time violation establishment and levying a fine against the establishment in the amount of $400 for a second time of violation and proposing that, that public safety director select the two consecutive days that the license will be suspended. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Council mm -hmm. Member Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a consideration of a request for a conditional use permit to allow a full service restaurant with intoxicating liquor, El Tejaban, at 6501 Nicollet Avenue, South Avenue um, Richfield Shops. The city has received an application requesting this conditional use permit for a full service food and intoxicating beverage service restaurant, and it'll be located in suite 6519. The proposed restaurant would occupy the 4,200 4, square feet 
It, it was pre previously occupied by the Eastern Buffet restaurant and the primary fiscal changes will be internal to the building. The applicant, El Tejaban, has outgrown their current space in the Hub Shopping Center and would like to move across the street for the, to this larger space. The difference between El Tejaban operations and Eastern Buffet operations include the addition of the alcohol service and karaoke. Maybe you'll have country music. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> live music is not planned. El Tejaban owners plan to continue to operate in the hub as well with a new restaurant concept, and maybe we can find out about that too. A parking study demand was performed to ensure that there would be adequate parking to accommodate this uh, restaurant with alcohol service. The professionally uh, prepared study does not anticipate a parking shortage and staff supports that conclusion. A request for a condition to use permit offers the city the opportunity to request additional improvements <coughs> on the site. However, given the existing site layout, there is little to no opportunity for change. Um, this went before the Planning Commission on June the 24th, and they, um, they um, recommended that they, uh, uh, that the council do uh, give them the, the conditional use permit. They did um, ask for two stipulations. One of them is that um, they close their operations at midnight, and the other one would be that um, that the owner and the um, the manager meet with um, the neighborhoods in uh, and try to work out you know some amicable agreement in terms of noise or whatever nuisances there are. So I would um, I would like to uh, to approve a conditional use permit. Uh, for the full service restaurant at 6501 Nicollet. And I know that we have um, the, the owner and. Do I need a second? Oh, well, I'll, I need a I'll second. second. Thank and you. Yeah, Sorry. And, and we do have folks here. If you would like to come up and speak, please do so. Yes. Identify yourself and sign in. Good evening. My name is Miguel Hernandez, and I'm the owner of the Tejaban Mexican Grill. And here's my son. Good evening. How's it going? Hi. I'm Miguel Hernandez also. I'm a manager. And <laughs> uh, I've been working at El Tejaban since I was able to work. And uh, about the question about the new place is that I will be taking that over, managing over, of course, over the watch out of my dad also. And uh, we're looking at a, a, a big fusion burger place. We don't have something like that around mm. the city. I mean, we have tailgate, but we're thinking bigger, robust, a lot of ingredients, a lot of fresh ingredients going into those burgers. It's something that you would find in Southern California. I don't know if you folks have ever enjoyed something like that, like Tom's Burgers or In-N-Out, but we don't have a yeah. relaxing, sure. casual place to do that, and we think that'd be a good spot for that. Okay, so the, the, the original restaurant that's over in the hub is gonna stay the same, right? Yes, except it's just going to be a different concept. It's going to be the same owner. We still have a two and a half year lease left on it, so okay. we have to make something of it. And I think we've done our work there, and uh, I think that would be a viable. Um, That's been. I've been enjoying the food there immensely. It's yeah. excellent. Thanks for coming by. But as you can see, you know, we get busy and yes. trying to move into the new area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem. Any questions on that? Oh, and working with the uh, neighborhood, will you have a meeting with the neighbors? Um, I believe that would do no harm. I, I okay. see the best interest. We have recently hit our five-year mark there. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of restaurants, it's a, a mature rate to start growing and giving back as we can start to do because of our sales rates and things like that. Mm -hmm. But to continue having be better sales rate, we need a bigger area. But it, we see getting more involved in the community, especially with the neighbors, to address any problems. Okay, council member. I'm sorry, is the... If, if I saw that I'm clear on this, is the fusion burger idea, would that be in the existing restaurant? Yes, yes. in the And hub. then the new one would be the El Teaban across the yes, street. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mayor? 
No, council member. Yeah, I'm just a couple quick questions. I watched uh, the presentation to the Planning Commission and there were a number of neighbors that, that voiced concerns and that's the reason for the stipulation about the meeting between representatives of the restaurant and mm -hmm. the, uh, the neighborhood. And the questions I got may involve staff also. Is the city gonna help facilitate that or monitor that meeting and also, um, uh, are we in a position or, or, or both the owners of the restaurant and the neighbors to reduce it to writing so, so there's some parameters or some ideas of what agreements were made? And I, I know the, the Planning Commission, some of the stuff came out, said that in terms of, of putting any teeth in that, it, it's predicated on the, the liquor license as opposed to anything else. So I, I, if we're going to have it, I know the neighbors were somewhat disgruntled by the fact that there's been a lot of agreements that <clears throat> apparently either were... were not not capped or or were kind of shortened and so I guess you know if it's going to be a stipulation for for the liquor license and going in there I think we should at least have some not control or direction in it but I'd like to see what the agreement is so so we've got something to kind of base future decisions mm -hmm. on in regards to liquor license and some of the other matters that may come up in regards to granting this conditional use permit yes um, thank you madam mayor council member Elliot you know, the, the direction from the Planning Commission was that um, that this meeting be held to for the neighborhoods, uh, neighbors to be able to voice their concerns to uh, the manager of the restaurant and the manager of the, of the center. Um, there was not a lot of discussion about, you know, what the conclusion of that meeting would be, you know, if, if anything um, of substance would come out in terms of of city requirements based on that feedback from the planning commission staff was really intending to act more as a facilitator um, our plan was to set the time and date invite the parties um, and we would be there in attendance to be a resource uh, and when i say we that would be uh, planning staff and environmental health staff who uh, is uh, involved in both restaurant licensing and um, alcohol licensing now, if you, if you would like to see us do something over and above that or different from that, that's certainly your prerogative. Personally, I'd rather see the, the owner of the restaurant and the neighbors come up with their own and, and reduce it to writing without input from the city. They're the ones that have to coexist mm -hmm. and, and get along. So I, I think anything that we put in force becomes a, a city action. And I just think the, the spirit of cooperation is between the owners and the neighbors to be able to put something down in writing that, that they agree to abide by. And, it's, and we can use them as guidelines, but we don't have to use them as a hammer. I, I would just like to see a, a spirit of cooperation from the get-go indicating how it's going to be handled with some of the concerns mm -hmm. the neighbors voiced at the Planning Commission. I think that sounds like the, the way to go from yeah, staff's perspective. Uh, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, uh, I was at that meeting also, and w w there's some things that we don't agree with. One, why limit the good record that this family has built up for over five years right across the street based on the conduct of previous tenants? Mm -hmm. It's not fair, you know, this family, mm -hmm. uh, I've worked in this area for over 10 years. I helped the previous family when they started uh, Tacos Morelos, the Perez mm -hmm. family, Gaspar and Lucy. Mm -hmm. Then they transitioned and Miguel purchased it. Uh, they've all been good families. They're stable. Uh, they have good training. Uh, we're planning on continuing the liquor training. But I, I have to tell you, a midnight closing is not going to work. No lease is going to get signed. Right now, they're looking at investing, <clears throat> along with the owners of the mall, between eighty dollars and $100,000 to open the doors. If they have to close down at midnight, it's not going to pay the bills. Uh, across the street, 60 feet away, they're allowed to be open seven days a week till 2 a.m. in the morning at the current location that they have. I also pulled the incident reports for all the houses on First Avenue South, and there was two incidents where noise was reported at 1030 and 1029 on February the 5th and February the 10th. There's another report made that that month uh, for some suspicious person further down by the Dairy Queen. I don't think there's enough basis to punish these people and not being allowed to stay open till 2 a.m. Now, we're willing to work with the community, but you know they also have to realize that we're talking apples and oranges. This is not an Eastern Buffet operation anymore. We've reduced the size of the seating areas, you can see. 
uh, we brought the seating down to its original occupancy of 150 instead of 200 people. And I have to reiterate again, no food company will come and deliver food at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning like it was alleged by the tenants that were complaining. All these deliveries are done at the latest before 5 p.m. to get all the food prepared and delivered. So <clears throat> I don't know who was out there making noise at that time, but it's not because of a food operation. And I don't even think that the Eastern Buffet would have had a food truck delivering food at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm. But I have to ask you to reconsider, uh, give us your approval to stay open until 2 a.m. And we're also willing to work with the city and the residents and we can propose Monday through Thursday closing at 10 p.m. the liquor sales. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday sell liquor until 2 a.m. in the morning. You know, but we need to have those liquor sales Otherwise, this project is not going to happen, you know. And it's not fair to punish them based on the conduct of other people in the past. And that, that brings up a quick question. Have they had, I don't believe I've seen them here for liquor violations. No. No, no I don't believe so. You know, I don't think so, the, the, just to make a clarification, the suggestion that, that a stipulation be added um, for the midnight closing, that came from staff after the Planning Commission meeting. That's not something that came from the Planning the Commission. Planning, yes, so we don't agree with that. As based on the, the feedback we heard, you know, we took a look at it and uh, they're right, it, it is 60 feet away or, you know, it's a short distance away from their existing location. Um, the difference between the existing location and the new location um, so how is that the, it, the new location, the property directly abuts residential properties. Uh, which was not the case with the um, previous location. Council Member Sandon, then Council Member Elliott. Yeah, I guess, um, when does their liquor renewal come up? Isn't that in January? With the new location, they would have to apply for a new liquor license at the new location. It, that doesn't, it doesn't move from the old location to the new one. So okay, it would be but a brand if, new. if they applied for it and got <coughs> it, wouldn't they have to renew it in January? That I don't know. That's, That's um, my recollection. Public safety. I think, yeah. uh, uh, Council Member Elliott. Yeah. Uh, if they apply now, it will be October. It will be approved by December to start operating January the 1st of okay. 2014. Okay. okay. The one that has to be renewed this year will be the existing location. The location. Okay. Mm -hmm. Council Member Elliott. Yeah, I'm a little bit discomforted with the approach you're taking, sir. I mean, coming in saying well, somebody's picking picking on you and, and holding you for the sins of your predecessors. I don't think that's the case in any way, shape, or form. If you got an issue with the, the suggested closing time or the cutoff at liquor at noon, talk to staff. That didn't have anything to do with the neighbors. Uh, uh, may I finish? Okay. Thank you. Um, and what I was suggesting is you meet with the neighbors and try to accommodate some of their concerns, whether or not you're going to sin or you've sinned before or somebody else did. Mm -hmm. All I did is try to, to set a, the stage for a spirit of cooperation. You come in and, and from my perspective, indicated that wasn't possible just by your attitude. So I'm a little bit discomforted by that. So, mm -hmm. so with that being said, uh, I'm having a hard time accepting the fact that, that make or break on you is selling liquor from noon to, from midnight okay. until two. May I finish before okay, you Okay, let me translate. From, from midnight to two o'clock. Okay. So if, if your success is gonna be predicated on sales of liquor after midnight, then, then that's not what you represented to the planning commission. You said that liquor is an accompaniment to no. the food you're serving. Yeah. It's not a primary goal of your restaurant to serve liquor. So, so I've got a disconnect between what you're telling no. me you need okay. to survive. Uh, there's a 60-40 breakdown that the restaurant has to comply with. 60% I, I in food that, sales, but you told me that 40% you're alcohol, they cannot exceed that. But at the Planning Commission, we were asking for 2 a.m. seven days a week. Miguel here cannot accept midnight because he's not going to pay the bills. We didn't know about, like the city attorney stated, Nobody mentioned anything about midnight that day. It was something after the fact that, <clears throat> you know. Well, that's what's before us now, and, so and that's I, what you're dealing with. You know, I usually come up maybe strong, but I'm pretty much to the point. And, and that's what I'm doing. Council Member you know, some, you know. Okay. I guess I would amend. Um, are we, we've actually moved this one? Yes. 
Okay. Yeah, we have. We've, we've seconded, but we can certainly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess I would, I'm willing to, you know, given the fact that they have been running a business with no problems, as we recall, um, I'm willing to allow them to stay open until uh, 2 a.m. on the, which day? It was Friday and Saturday? Friday, Friday. And Sunday. Friday, Friday Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. And Sunday. And in return, you are agreeing to do what? Cool. Uh, stay open 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday to Thursday. Okay, that would I, I'm comfortable with that, and I can appreciate um, Council Member Elliott's feeling like you're pushing back to meet with the neighbors, but I don't think you are. I think you need to do yeah, that I'm anyway. The, he's very direct, and that's yeah. what we want him here for. <laughs> yeah. We want him to express our, you know, the legality of things because we don't have any training in that. But uh, I understand what you're saying. Uh, I'm there in the front of the house, and we we definitely don't the liquor sales at at that time. Is to accommodate the food. We, as I stay there until two in the morning, making sure everything's done correctly. And people do come in. It's surprising. It's regular people, and uh, I, I would see why the neighbors. And I'm actually really, I'm, I'm com very comfortable. I'm sure my dad would be fine meeting with the neighbors and uh, building community with them because there's nothing wrong that we're doing. We're not trying to hide anything. And I would understand that because, you know, it's two a.m. You want to sleep, I understand, but a lot of the people that come in there at that time are friendly people. They're our regulars now at this market, and uh, we don't have any problem with meeting with anyone, but sorry about it all. Can I, can I also just recommend and suggest that you even just talk to um, our police department about, as you enlarge in the, in the next section of your restaurant, about what you could do public safety and when you should be calling and how you should could control that. I think that would be very advantageous to you because if you do get a lot of calls you will be back at the council and we have closed restaurants before because of lots of calls yes, and we're pretty strict about this and but you have been very good restaurateurs and mm. i've been to your establishment in fact i helped when there was a problem getting the liquor license i guess uh, so i just would say that it would it would be good for you mm -hmm. because when you ever so often once in a while doesn't matter what how good a restaurant you are you once in a while have somebody you have to call the police on um, and when you should do that and get on that really fast and not put up with a lot, that would probably also help your neighbors. And yeah. Council Member Fitzhenry. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm agreeing with Council Member uh, Sando. Um, the other item you got to remember is you're going to come up for a review. You get police calls. Your liquor license is on the line. Mm -hmm. So it's to your benefit to, you know, have that establishment toe the line. I would caution you, the comments when I was copping there that we used to have is don't let your employees go outside in the back to smoke oh, yeah. or have that back door open because if you got karaoke going and you open that back door, you just made a big portal to all your residents. So that's just a cautionary thing. That's where we used to have problems before where the uh, restaurants would leave their back door open and then all the noise exited. Um, but I'm willing to give them a try. Um, see what goes on. We're going to be monitoring this, so if things happen, we'll know. <laughs> Council members, my name's Robert Wise. I'm with Mid America Real Estate, who act as managers for the shopping center on behalf of the owners. Um, just following the 24th, the, the meeting on June 24th, we did meet with these guys. Obviously, there was a, a couple of concerns about the stipulations, and straight away I, I spoke with Matt Brillhart and Melissa Polman about setting up the meeting. With the, uh, with the representative of the residents behind the shopping center there to um, kind of mitigate any of the problems that they had and just chat through. And as you said, this spirit of cooperation to sit down with these guys and go through any of the issues with ongoing nuisance. Um, and also, you know, additionally, once I met with these guys, they came up with a couple of compromises. Uh, to your point, you know, not taking trash out beyond a certain time, moving their employee parking, to the front of the center so that people aren't driving out from the back of the space you know at the end of a shift and just generally doing what they can and listening to the the local residents to find out what's going to be you know decent compromises to build a good relationship with them okay and so you'll be helping as well yeah and we'll matthew and myself will liaise with um melissa and the, the representative you. with the residents and these guys if, if I may. Please. Just, um, you indicated, sir, that you actually <laughs> participated in a meeting with the neighbors? Yes, we were. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and they're, they're okay, and, and they felt, they felt uh, that their concerns were being addressed, at least recognized, and, and 
uh, attempts would be made to mitigate it both by the owners and also the managers of the, of the complex. Yeah, I'm sorry if I alluded to the fact that meeting had already occurred. It hasn't. But the stipulation was that it needs to occur before the certificate of occupancy was granted. Okay. So uh, the plan was to meet with them after this meeting. Right. And so you'll be participating also in working in conjunction with the owners to make sure that as much as possible their concerns are going to be addressed and alleviated? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. So we have a friendly amendment to the motion that's already been seconded. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have a second to the friendly amendment? Um, I'll uh, second amendment. that. Mm -hmm. Is there other discussion? Well, I just wonder if we could stipulate that we have that the food be a little bit more spicy. <laughs> <laughs> well, make sure you get an invite to the open. I would veto that <laughs> amendment. I like it spicier too. Bring your own spice. That's really good. All those in oh, favor? I, I had one other Please. comment. As long as we have Mid America here, we appreciate your coming. Um, part of the cup looks at parking among other issues and the one thing I didn't see addressed in here and maybe you've already addressed it as management is bicycle parking. Mm -hmm. Do you have bicycle parking on site? And if not, can we require that as something that we need to have because we're pushing bicycles in Richfield? A bicycle rack? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question and uh, my colleague Matthew over here has <laughs> been involved in the property for a longer time than I before bicycles were even invented, I think, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I doubt that. <laughs> Hello, my, ma my name is Matt Rieger, and I'm responsible for all property management services for MidAmerica. I've actually been involved with Richfield in one way, shape, or form Richfield shops for over 20 years. We'd be more than happy to, to take a look at the bicycle situation. We have a couple of islands mm -hmm. that are attached to the sidewalk that we could deal with some bicycle racks. Bicycle racks in front of, of the stores would be a little more difficult yeah. because we've got a fairly narrow sidewalk. Mm -hmm. But I know we have an island or two where we could put uh, six or eight place bicycle rack, wouldn't be an issue at all. Or some, just the hoops that they could look yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, something yeah. fairly yeah. simple yeah. like that. Our bicycle committee is very anxious to promote bicycling and bicycle parking, and bicycle amenities throughout the city. And Absolutely. as things come forward before us, I will be bringing it up at every opportunity. Yep. So yeah. if you would put that as part of one of the cup requirements, I would be most appreciative. <laughs> yep. And I will make that as a second amendment. Okay. okay. Um, I also want to say um, thank you for the facelift that you have done. You know, I want you to know that um, I started managing that center myself a lot younger back then, about 1986. Mm -hmm. And so that re renovation was something we were looking forward to for a long, long, long time. And it actually was nominated for a best renovation by the Minnesota Shopping Center Association. Oh, Didn't win, but it was nominated along with four other properties across the Twin Cities metro area. So we were very excited with that renovation. And if you've noticed recently, um, Richfield North is the north side of 66, Richfield South is the south side of 66, and we yes. just completed a renovation there yes. uh, uh, with the city's involvement mm -hmm. for the Best Buy and the Old Country Buffet yes. storefront. I think that turned out very well as, as well. For, for a lot of years being a property manager, looking at that center going, God, I wish I could get the landlord to spend a few dollars around here, it finally got done. Mm -hmm. The same, for your information too, the same, uh, uh, family, the Lupian organization, has has owned that center for almost 30 years now. So they've had a long-term commitment to the city of Richfield. I mentioned uh, Councilman Garcia. I was almost apologetic. Um, I used to appear before the city council on a regular basis, but I hadn't been here since you did this beautiful, beautiful yeah. facility, and it's gorgeous. I remember the old one where you walked in, and you could hardly find a place to sit, and the chambers and everything were so small and tight. So congratulations as well. I know it's been here for two years, and shame on me for not... Uh, getting over here on a more regular basis, but it is beautiful. You've done a very nice job. Thank We're you. very excited about this tenant being part of our center. Um, the Asian Buffet was getting tired. We were having issues with it, and their lease was coming up for renewal, and we probably would not have renewed them. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity to bring an existing business as successful as, as, as they've been, and I live in South Minneapolis, so I knew of these guys before. Um, we even talked to them about space, because my wife and I would drive out here from South Minneapolis to uh, have dinner. They have a tremendous reputation, yes. as all of you know, in the uh, south side of Minneapolis. So it's terrific. We're, we're, we're blessed to have them to be interested in our shopping center. And we thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I was serious about my motion that we add some bicycle parking as part of our cup agreement. If we'll do can. those bike racks for you. All right. If we can all get right. a second. I, I, you know, I, I, again, I go back to let's do a standard before we start requiring that. The bicycle committee is working on it, and I'm sure they will work. Yeah. They're not going to open until January anyway. So. Right. Well, I'd like to, 
to wait to make anything official until there's actually, you know, a I, way I, of, of, of complying with all the businesses or whatever. I've made a motion. Are you, somebody I'll willing? There, it. we have a second now. We can officially talk about it. I think oh, it's right. worth doing it. Well, they, they'll meet <laughs> the standards, anyway. whatever they are, and they are going to be coming. I met with them. I think you've met with them as well. Yes. Um, they will be coming back to us. I've suggested they bring a number of designs and costs for what it costs to put in different bike racks. Okay. And we will have that information for them by the time they can install it in, well, and I in January through the snow. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hope you will invite some businesses too to participate in, in that meeting so that they can add their perspective. So. Because we I, I, have had a bike rack for some time at Richfield Shops South. Yeah. Or excuse me, yeah, Richfield yes, Shops yes, South, exactly. outside the comic book store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is a bike rack there. It's movable. We put it in during the winter time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, again, we have deeper sidewalks on that mm -hmm. side to work with. So we just got to sit down and figure out where it makes mm -hmm. the most sense for North. We don't have people tripping over it. It's in the way of traffic and doors, sure, that kind sure. of thing. Mm -hmm. I have every faith you'll do a great job. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Okay, this, uh, this is a friendly amendment, too. Um, we have two uh, friendly amendments, I believe. All those oh, in... We all, voted on the first one. We haven't voted on any of them. Oh, no? No. Voting, voting on, on the, the first one was amended. There's two friendly amendments. So uh, we'll go to the first one, first amendment. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, carries the second amendment. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you Thank very, you very much. much. And we look forward to having you here in town. We, I enjoy your restaurant now, as now, well. Now we need the fire. Well, I just have please, a question please. because I have to write down the. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm taking the notes. So the first amendment was to restrict the hours of operation until 10 p.m. on 10 30, Monday through Thursday and until 2 a.m. on Friday through Sunday. I just want to make yeah, sure. 10 30, he said. 10 30. Oh, was it 10? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Just wanted to double check. Okay. All right. Thank you. City manager? I, I just. I wanted to make sure I under that was hours of operation or hours that were selling alcohol. Operation. Operation. Oh, okay. If they want okay. to close at ten, then we'll let them close at ten. Yeah. Okay. No. Actually, I think that would work for the community. And if they need something different, they'll have to come back then and make their case. People are just as loud eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I understand. And we look forward to the, those hamburgers too. Yes, That's I'm looking right. forward to that too. And a little jalapeno on the side. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what we have in mind. Yes. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have to vote on the whole thing, right? We already voted on everything. We voted on, the, on the two first, amendments. No, we voted on the first one with the first friendly amendment. Oh, I didn't catch that. Okay. okay. And then the second amendment. Okay. Here, here's, okay. Because the first one had to be amended to change it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct? All right. Council Member Fitzhenry, you are next. Uh, yep, please. I might, I might save uh, Council Member Fitzhenry some breath. Uh. Um, I'm not sure if it was communicated, but um, earlier this week or late last week, uh, McDonald's contacted city staff and asked for this item to be delayed, okay. uh, consideration of this item. Um, mm -hmm. Staff advised them that due to um, schedules, uh, vacation schedules, that it would likely then have to be delayed until the August 13th meeting. Uh, McDonald's indicated that that would be fine. So staff is suggesting that items number seven and eight be continued to oh. uh, August 13th. Oh, so we, I'm sorry, both Sue and... Uh, so we um, like should have bent it in the agenda portion, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, I thought okay. that had been amended. Okay, so those will just be carried over. Okay. Do um, we have to vote on that move? Do we need to make an amendment Since to the we had agenda? it as a hearing. <laughs> do we need to make an amendment to the agenda to carry those over? Yeah, um, Madam Mayor, I think you should um, amend the agenda and... Okay table those to the August 13th meeting. Okay, then I will move that we table the following two items, item seven and item eight on the agenda until the August 13th meeting. Second. You know the discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Well, that sure shortens our agenda. <laughs> uh, city manager. Um. You know, actually, I really don't have anything uh, to report. I, I, I was going to talk a little bit about the 4th of July, but you covered it so well, I don't think I need to say anything. Uh, I did want to say, well, I should say one thing. You know, I've gotten a couple of emails from uh, people um, who uh, were kind of chastising the city for um, eliminating the, the carnival uh, because we were allegedly uh, kowtowing to thugs. And, you know... <laughs> 
That, that's not, I, I, people need to understand that that's not the case. Um, the, uh, I, the police department is not afraid of dealing with, uh, with criminals. They're not afraid to deal with uh, people who uh, may have gang affiliation. That's not the case. The, the whole reason that the city was concerned about the carnival uh, was not because the police were afraid of dealing with it. It's because the carnival wasn't uh, really working toward the goal of what the 4th of July celebration was in the first place, and that's providing a, a family environment in that Vets Park mm -hmm. uh, for, the, uh, for the fireworks and for other you know, events that happened during the 4th of July. I know that we got comments, some of our employees got comments about how nice it was mm -hmm. to not have to worry about stuff like that going on over there. And, um, and I think what's going, what you'll see in this city, for those watching, is that more and more that's going to go back to being what it was supposed to be in the first place, you know, 25 years ago, whenever it was, and we started really getting this thing big. And it was a, it was a family event for people in Richfield. It wasn't all about uh, bringing in a lot of people from other parts of the city to, uh, of the metro area that is, to, to have a carnival. It was about a community 4th of July. And um, we still draw a lot of people from a lot of other surrounding communities to come to, the, to our 4th of July celebration because of the parade, uh, the car show, all the other events that we have and the spectacular fireworks that we have. And um, that's, that's the gist of, for the folks who are watching of why we don't have the carnival, not because we were, <laughs> we were somehow intimidated by thugs. That's not the case. Agreed, agreed. And I heard an awful lot of positive the night of the street dance when I was around talking to folks about how they thought it was a really good thing. I heard way more positive about that than I did negative. I think I heard saw the same two emails we all got. And I can add to that since I live within noise distance and they used to come in every year a week early or you know a few days early and start setting up and the trucks were rolling in at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. because they were coming from their last carnival. And if you go look over there today, we don't have the whole park dug up because we had rides over there. We still have grass with good turf. So the recovery <laughs> is a lot faster not having the carnival. Yeah, so. and we had the farmer's market. We didn't have to cancel the farmer's market either. That was wonderful. That was great. Okay, claims and payroll. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'm um, seeing no further actions. I call this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>